Takutwa Chinguza, the black tinder swindler, scammed me and several other black girls out of tens of thousands of pounds. And this is that story. What is up, y'all? It's Amber, and I am back yet again with another video. I just want to say thank you guys so much for subscribing. I am so lucky and just so grateful to be at 4K right now. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Anytime you view one of her videos, she gets paid. So please help this woman get her 12,000 pounds back because she's not gonna get it through Takuzwa. Hopefully she can get it through sharing her story on the internet. I'm going to help tell this woman's story and help spread the word about an active scammer who is still scamming people to this day, who has not been caught. So we have Shirley Becker. This is the woman who got scammed. Currently she is a doctor in the United Kingdom. But at the time of her story, she was not a doctor yet. She wasn't even in medical school yet. She was entering into medical school. So Shirley's always been kind of that it girl, kind of influencer type of woman. So she had Instagram, right? And you know, she's on there posting her cute little photos, doing her thing. And of course she's gonna have a lot of people DMing her, right? So she gets a DM from this man named Fakuzwa Chikuza, right? At first she's like, okay, you know, this is just some random guy, some random fan, you know, when you're like on the internet as an influencer, you're gonna have a lot of people in your DMs, you're gonna have a lot of people reaching out to you. So she was just, you know, being cordial, being kind as you would with anybody you don't really know like that on the internet. But what kind of made her pay more attention to him and give him more time of day is that he was a Cambridge University alumni right meaning he used to go to Cambridge University he graduated and got his medical degree there and Cambridge University is one of those universities where it's like mainly white people and Shirley was like okay another fellow black person who went to Cambridge University like that's hella cool that's dope wow I need to definitely like click up with you and become friend friendly with you and see what's up you no know, she was actually about to enter into that university so they bonded over that and they kind of took on like a mentor-mentee type of relationship. From his Instagram, he was like a high-flying surgeon. He had pictures of him in the operating room, pictures of him on a bunch of private jets flying off to different countries, you know. Takuzwa kind of built up this facade for Shirley, you know. He told me he was a New York-born, privately educated, spoiled rich kid essentially that got bullied for being and sounding posh. Tried to claim that he had a very Brit British posh accent because he went to a British private boarding school. He had an African accent anyway. So he said that he currently works for the a hospital, Adam Brooks Hospital. And the real shift from Instagram DM pen pals to real life number, email, in person, um, came from the fact that at this time I decided that I wanted to make a shift from a career in fintech to a career in medicine and so I was applying for graduate entry medicine including at the University of Cambridge. Yeah they became more friendly more friendly and as they were going out to these dinner dates these coffee dates these you know whatever just hangout sessions he was mentoring her so he offered to write her a personal statement he even offered to have her intern at the hospital that he works at. So that's a huge deal. If you know anything about medicine, whenever you do anything involving medicine, you have got to do an internship. She's used to seeing Takuts would go off and fly off to do like emergency surgeries and everything like that. But he promised her the internship, right? So, you know, Shirley was following up and they were doing everything. Like they were getting dates ready together to try to figure out when she can start her internship, getting the paperwork together, whatever, everything. The day comes when Shirley's supposed to go to his hospital and intern, intern with him, you know, shadow him and go see what he does all day. It was the day where I was starting my internship with him. He promised to pick me up from North London to Cambridge. And when it came time, he was ghost. And I was ringing, 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 ringing. I got a call on a private number and they left a voicemail. It was a female voice. The woman explained that she was calling from a secretary office at Adam Brooks Hospital and was calling to inform me that Dr. Takutswa Chinguza is in an emergency operation and it is unable to answer his phone. She was like, okay, you know, I mean, he is busy, but like, I gotta get this internship done. I'm not gonna just wait around for you. Keep giving me the run around. Let me just go ahead and figure this out myself. So she goes through her sister who um, I think is with a doctor or is a doctor or something like that. And she figures out the internship by herself. So 
at this point Shirley announces in the story that she starts to have like a boyfriend situation yeah so this is where he actually starts to scam her okay this is where it tune your ears in because this is where it's gonna really start getting juicy so like I said earlier he knew that she loved traveling just based off her Instagram and found out how much she loved traveling and where she was about to go um next because you know they're friends they talk dang near every day you know so he found out that she was trying to fly somewhere and she was going to fly through the Emirates airline, right? He knew that I was looking for my next holiday. You know, I had the travel bug. I was always trying to move around. I settled on wanting to go to the Maldives. Takutwa, who came in saying, I have a lot of air miles with Emirates. Why don't you purchase a ticket from me so that you can fly to Maldives and back for 640 pounds? So I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Before I knew it, Takutwa Chinguza had already sent me a confirmation email of the booking with Emirates. At this point, I felt like, oh my God, I'm indebted to him. He's now 640 pounds down because I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, very frivolously. I better send him that money like ASAP. So I had the confirmation in my email. After all, I had a confirmation from Emirates saying that I had a ticket booked. I saw him travel on his stories almost every single week. And so it didn't seem crazy that he had an excess of air miles. He offered my mum the same to go to her mother's funeral in Ghana thank god my mom said first of all why am I buying a ticket of a little child and second of all I'm flying direct to Ghana with BA what do you mean stop over in Dubai Shirley said that these other couple scams kind of happen in a short succession so it means like they happen in a small amount of time so she gives to Kuzwa the money 640 pounds right for the flight and then Takuzwa knows that Shirley needs a MacBook right and he's like, okay, I, being Cambridge University alumni, I get really good deals on freaking MacBooks, okay? Buy a MacBook through me, send me 400 bucks, like, it's gonna be cheaper than if you were to buy the MacBook yourself. So I was buying a MacBook laptop in the very near future, and so he mentioned that him kind of being affiliated with the University of Cambridge meant that he gets discounts with Apple. I mean, you can argue whether or not something like this makes sense to you. I remember when he said this and I was thinking back to a supervision I had when I was studying natural sciences at the University of Cambridge. And I remember my supervisor getting a new MacBook and opening it during our supervision, explaining to us that he gotten this essentially from the university because he's the supervisor at the university. So then it didn't seem crazy to me that Takutwa, who's mentioned several times that he has an affiliation with the university through teaching medical students, uh, receives discounts on MacBook. So I sent him 400 pounds for the MacBook. He's on a trip to Singapore. So when he lands, he'll be able to, you know, give me the MacBook. On his way back from Singapore, he gets stuck in an airport with credit card and debit card issues. And he essentially does his first cry for help on my credit card, on my debit card, I need 200 pounds to get myself out of this airport. Like, it's a crisis, it's a crisis. He expressed that he was really, really embarrassed to ask for this money. And it had nothing to do with financial issues, but all the things to do with like his credit card or debit card not working in that particular airport or something. And so what is 200 pounds for, for someone who can then come through the airport, get back to the UK and transfer it to me as soon as they get back to the UK? He gets through customs, like she sends the pounds, gets through customs, and he's back in London, I believe, which is where they're like residing at the time. And you know, he's not sending the money back and Shirley's like, run me my money. You said you're gonna pay me my money back. Like, where is my money? And he's like, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me send you a picture of my ID to let you know it's like, this is who I am. Don't get angry, please. <laughs> you know, here's a picture of my ID. He sends her a picture of his ID and his freaking finger is conveniently placed over the street number of his address. I mean, when she got the picture from, from him, it kind of shut her up like how he wanted for a couple days. And then she's like, well, no, I still don't have money in my pocket. Like you just send me a picture of your ID. And she's like, you know what? I'm gonna go to your address. I'm showing up to your door right now. I need my money. Yeah, I'm expecting my money when I come running my money, right? I forgot to mention that during these dinner dates and coffee dates and little hangout sessions that Takudzwa had with Shirley, he, you know, was asking her for advice about different friendships that he had. One particular friendship that came up was this woman named Michelle. Now he claimed to pay off Michelle's student loans of like $10,000, right? And he made a deal with her like, you know, I'm gonna pay in full your student loans and then you can just pay me off monthly with a little bit of interest. It'll come out to like $2,000 extra interest for me, you know, loaning you this money. It's better than a bank. Um, but he told Shirley like, hey, 
this Michelle girl is not returning my text messages after I showed her like me paying off her college tuition. What do I do? I don't, I'm a really giving person. I'm such a good person and I gave this woman like paid her tuition. Like surely what should I do? Let's see what should I do? <laughs> and surely being the sensible friend that she was trying to be, she was like, absolutely not. I would get a refund. This woman is seeing like she's scamming you, you know, like absolutely not. This is exactly what me, myself, I would tell a friend if they did that. I would be like, yeah, girl, get your money back. Like, the heck? He ends up, like, texting Shirley a screenshot of him getting a refund from PayPal or at least requesting a refund from PayPal. And now I'm really getting mad. And I'm saying, off to work today. I am driving to your house and I'm getting this MacBook myself. So I will meet you at your home. He sees the message, he blue ticks the message, he doesn't say a word. The moment work ended, I got in my car, drove down the M11 from London to Cambridge and went to the address he told me he lived at. I could see the tail end of the address on the other side of its thumb. So I drove, I parked, I got out of the car, I knock on the door. A white woman answers the door, looks me up and down and says, I'm guessing Takutwa owes you a MacBook or something like that. My jaw drops. And I responded, yes, how do you know? And she said, many girls who are young, black, come knocking, looking for Takutwa, saying that they were promised some kind of Apple products. My, I, I couldn't gasp. I didn't even have it in me to gasp. And she said, you might want to try and knock two doors down over to your right and see if Takutu was home. Then I realized Takutu had covered the address with his thumb so that I wouldn't know exactly what door number he lived at, but I was very close. I walk two doors down. It's a pretty nice house. I knock on the door. A 90 year old white man answers the door. And I'm like, what is this wild goose chase? This man has nothing to do with Takutwa. Does Takutwa Chinguza live here? And he said, oh, one moment, one moment. And I thought, okay, 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 I'm getting close. Remember Takutwa said his mom was in America. His mom was always busy. She was a high flying surgeon. She was an American. And guess who answers the door? Guess who this 90 year old white man gets to answer the door? Takutwa's mom. This 90 year old white man and this 50 year old quite good looking black woman, <laughs> they're in a relationship, which I'm not really gonna say what two and two I was putting together. But let's just say it was starting to look like it was running in the family. So I say to Takutua's mom, is Takutua here? And she starts to get so defensive, tries to shut the door in my face saying, no, Takutua isn't here, Takutua isn't here. It turns out, yes, it is Takutua's mom and she's estranged from him and she doesn't know why he doesn't think he does, that he has been scamming people for a very long time. And yeah, she hasn't talked to him in years. And the only reason why his address is on the ID is because he used to live there. It's like she can't do anything else at that point but leave and just thank the woman for her time and thank her for even saying anything to her, right? So she confronts Takuza, right? And she texts him and is like, hey, listen, bruh, I know the truth. I know you've been scamming people. I just met up with your mom. She told me you were a scammer, like, doop doop, right? Shirley's like, I'm going to the police. I need my money. And he pretty much was like, you, and then blocked her. <laughs> really angry. She's fuming at this point and feeling like hopeless, like, I'm not gonna get my 12,000 pounds back. Like, I just really got scammed. But then she remembers Michelle. I told the story about how Takutu introduced this character, Michelle, who he was lending 10,800 pounds to, and she was paying him back in installments to pay off 12,500 pounds. But remember I said that he asked PayPal for a refund, but he never showed me him talking to Michelle about getting a refund. So I'm assuming that this Michelle character is somehow a sick and twisted part of his scam. One error Tucker's were made and one place where he effed up was sending me a screenshot of Michelle, not only of their WhatsApp conversations, but also of their Instagram conversations where I could see her Instagram handle. So I searched her up on Instagram, found her and DM'd her. At this stage, I think the smartest thing to do is to tell Michelle not to break up her friendship with Takutua, not to give away the fact that she knows that this is a, basically a scam, okay? So I say to her, you tell Takutua that you want to meet up with him in Cambridge, in the shopping center, at a restaurant to give him money in cash. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna turn up. I'm gonna rock up. You don't even have to be involved if you don't want to be involved. So in between the time that Michelle and I have this phone call and the day of the sting operation, I call one of my friends from my old school. 
And I can tell you one thing about my old school. I went to a very diverse school with a lot of intimidating guys, okay? So I call one of these intimidating guys and say, this is what's happened with me. You basically have to roll with me because Takutsu needs to be shaken in his boots when I confront him. Shirley and Michelle and Shirley's like druggish, ruggish university friend who is a man planned to ambush, bruh. Unfortunately, Shirley and her male friend were like late to the situation. So, you know, it was kind of scaring Takuzu off. And Michelle started getting like scared. She didn't meet up with him yet. And she just like, you know what? I don't want to meet up with him by myself. I'm really freaking terrified of him. I'm scared. I don't know what he's going to do to me. Kind of chickening out. She just went straight to the police. <laughs> and of course, Takuzu was like, well, nobody's here to meet me. I'm the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Poor Shirley, like she's been doing everything she can to try to get her money back. And so she's like, okay, at this point, I'm really going to go to the police. And so she finally goes to the police station where Michelle is already at. And they divulge all this information about how he scammed her. Shirley's like, I lost 12,000 pounds. Like, can y'all help me? And they pretty much just like laughed in her face and was like, this sounds like a romance scheme and blah, blah, blah. And pretty much was like, I can't help y'all. So she's getting lashed off by the police. I said, I went to a school of very diverse characters. And so my friend from school calls another friend from school and basically says, yo, I need someone's address. I'm not gonna go into any further details, but he said he needed an address and five minutes later, an address was dropped to his WhatsApp. So we now have an address for Takutu Chinguza that was obtained and however it was obtained. And we decide, say no more. We're driving the hour and we're going to Takutwa's new address. I park up. At this point, my friend from school puts his bomber jacket on, puts his hoodie on, starts covering his face. Loki, Loki. I'm thinking, no, 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 no. This is not how this is gonna go down. And he's like, calm down, calm down. Like, I'm from this life. Like, I know how this stuff goes. And I'm like, please, dear Father Lord, I just want him to stand there as a male character so Takutwa doesn't feel like it's yet another girl that he has to confront because I don't think he's dealt with men. I don't want this to become physical in any kind of way. But we knock on the door, we see a light going on. We're thinking someone is home, someone's coming down the stairs. We hear boom, 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 coming down the stairs. We're thinking, yes, my friend is getting ready. They open the door. My friend literally barges the door and says, where the f is Takutsuwa? Oh my, I will never forget this moment. I will never forget this moment. What do I hear? I hear a white lady scream, oh my God, oh my God. Mind you, the optics of this are not great. It is like 12 at midnight. You've got, all she can see is a dark figure in a bomber jacket, like not ballied up, but like covered up barging in our house and i'm thinking my goodness this is every woman's nightmare and i'm like i'm gonna call him a fake name and i'm like benjamin 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 like calm down calm down calm down and she hears a female voice and she's like hyperventilating she's shaking at the door and my friend benjamin apologizes profusely saying i'm so sorry we're just looking for takoso we're just looking for takoso and she's like takoso doesn't live here anymore I was like, okay, um, I'm gonna invite y'all in. Let's like talk real quick because I want to explain. I know you guys are angry. This man has done these things to people before. So they got in there, started talking to her, right? So yeah, the white lady said they used to live there. They got kicked out because they were actually illegally subletting. You know, subletting is mostly illegal everywhere, but they were subletting the apartment. So Takuzwa rented the apartment, right? Him and his girlfriend from whoever the owner was and was himself renting it out to like i think 10 people who were immigrants to the country they're in and cramping them all into a one bedroom apartment which is like inhumane it's just not enough space for 10 people the landlord was like oh no you gotta get up out of here with this like i don't want you to rent to anybody else i'm renting to you because you know your credit's good your whatever you know the background checks they do when you rent so yeah, that's how they got kicked out of that place. And that's the only reason why they still have that address. Whoever the shady friend was, where they got it from was, that's the last known address for them. Because as y'all know, scammers do not stay in one place long. That's pretty much it. Like Shirley posted this story and she actually had tons of women reaching out to her, tons of black women. Well, at some point, many years later, I actually told this story on Clubhouse. And once I told this story on Clubhouse, and there was a little bit of backlash towards Takutwa on Twitter. It meant that every time someone got a bit suspicious about Takutwa Chiguza, 
because he was in the middle of scamming them, they would Google his name and what would come up? My Twitter handle. So I used to get so many DMs from girls saying, oh my goodness, I live in Cambridge. I live in Peterborough. I live in Ipswich. I've been scammed. I've been scammed. I've been scammed. I live in South Africa. I've been scammed. I can't even go back and screenshot all of the DMs because there are just so many of them. Since starting to upload this playlist series, whatever you want to call it, the amount of people that have DM'd me on TikTok to say that they've been scammed, they were about to be scammed. He's even le leaked someone's nudes because he couldn't get money out of them. Like, you need to understand that this scam is so much bigger than myself and then Michelle. Until this day, Takutwa Chinguza is still operating. There's like an upside to this story. So you remember when Michelle ended up was paying these monthly payments to Takuza, right? I don't think she did it for that long, but you know, of course, when she found out, she stopped paying this man. And you remember that text message of a screenshot from like, I think it was PayPal that Shirley got from Takuza. So it was just a refund request, but it appears that the refund did not go through on Takuza's end, which is amazing and wonderful for Michelle. I'm so happy she is not in debt to this man and he actually lost some money for once. I just want to say, I think Shirley is very brave and I thank her so much for sharing her story and trying to help other women who could possibly possibly fall victim to this freaking scammer and his girlfriend. Like she said, he is still an active scammer, allegedly. You know, allegedly for legal reasons, he is still an active scammer. And you know, she's helping other potential victims. So shout out to her. And yes, go fully view her videos, please. And help her get her money back. <laughs> Cause I know being scammed is not a good feeling. It sucks, especially when you have a good heart like her. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And I will see you guys later with another video.